All right, guys, welcome back to the vlog. Hope you guys had a fantastic Canada Day or 4th of July for all our families in uh, the United States. So today's vlog, we're going to talk about the Faribault tune. You guys, it's so good to the point where I just can't, I just have to share with you guys. I've had it for a couple weeks now. It feels fantastic, like over the Honda Attitude. The Honda Attitude, it just, I, it just uh, to get you from point A to point B to your dyno to actually get your car dialed in on the tune uh, on the dyno so that's all i think what uh honda Atta is I mean, unless you're really happy with it but i don't re recommend uh going with the honda Atta tune just all by itself if you got a whole bunch of parts installed get a dyno tune uh, to pull the maximum potential out of your vehicle and then today that's what we're doing let me just read you some of the uh some of the stats that it has online. Again, I'll put the link in the description below for you guys to read, but so far, I'll give you my uh, conclusion at the end of the vlog, but it, just just go to their site. It just But some of the things that just stands out is uh, revised limited uh, rev limit up to 7,200 RPM. Uh, they have a launch control at 4,000 RPM. We're gonna try it out today. And the most important is the four, the five, four maps, pretty much. Uh, street one, street two, race one, race two, and then the fifth one, I don't even consider a map, but it is, is valet mode. Basically what they're doing is, it doesn't tell you what, how much boost they, they tuned it to. I did a couple of polls and I think it's roughly about 21 pounds. I don't know if that's stock. I didn't really look up what stock boost is, but on the gauge here, it's 21, probably 21, 22 pounds. Based on this, the mass, what they say here is they play around with a lot of the um, traction control is what it is, basically allowing a certain amount of slip during each um, map. But you know what? I like to do my vlogs, very tangible. I have the little draggy here with us. We're gonna turn that on and we're gonna test out this vlog, uh, this variable tune. The variable so far, it, it, very impressive, you guys, but maybe it's all in my head. On my previous car, I have a GTR, and I bought a E-Tune, installed it, and it, man, I tell you, I felt like it's it was fantastic. It was, it was that good until I got it properly dyno-tuned to get it. And I wanted to get the maximum potential power gains out of the car, so I got it dyno-tuned. And when we did a baseline, I tell you guys, it was all in my head. It was like... It was barely above stock. No good, no good. So what I recommend is just, if you want the most potential out of your car, power gains, and then at least you get a graph of where, where your power bands are. Cause come on, you can just pick up numbers and it just, if it's not on the dyno, it just doesn't mean anything. It just, you can pick numbers all you want, but when you have something, a paper to show, to prove that this is the numbers I made, how much boost, and where the power bands are and how much torque then you were talking right but so stay tuned we will do that uh we will put this uh we'll talk about it after but let's go do some pulls on the draggy here let's see what the variable tune or fearable variable what this tune is all about all right guys all right so we're all connected to the draggy and uh so let's say let's go see this launch control first because it says it's uh, good for 4000 rpm yeah holds at 4000 rpm okay we're good for that so what i'm thinking that i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna do a 0 60 to see what kind of numbers there are uh how good it is right let's do that one first 060 without launch control and then we'll do another one with 060 in uh with launch control at 4000 rpm okay let's get this one mind you bear with you guys i'm not a race car driver i'm just an enthusiast um uh, okay I'm not i know this car is not known for drag racing but you know what for the vlog Okay, let's try it. We're in Mexico, you guys. Mexico, Canada. Okay, we're ready. I'm kind of nervous. Don't want to break my car. Okay, let's try it. Not 
not bad. Let's just see. Uh, let's see the numbers. Let it let it cool down here. Okay. Quarter mile. Oh, quarter mile. Okay, let's pull it up. Any guesses? Zero sixty <coughs> and a slow ass six point nine nine. Emotional damage. That's pretty slow ass. Okay, let's turn around and let's do it with the uh, launch control. That's pretty. That's pretty sad. Okay, let's try it again. All right, guys. So a lot. So a lot of you guys have been asking me about the uh, RSR coilovers and then how it's dialed in, how it is so far. You guys, I'm telling you, quarter mile. It's fantastic. 30. It's fantastic. Uh, so far, so what I've done is I've dialed it down. So basically, you go all the way to full hard, and then dial for the front ones. I dialed it back six clicks, and then for the uh, rears, I did eight clicks. And man, I'm telling you, it's a, it's fantastic. So on a suspension, is you know when it's. When you hit a bump, it should be like, like that, and not like. Hey, yeah, let me pull over. Okay, so base, so basically, when you're dialing in the suspension, is like it should be like, when you're driving, it should be like this, and it absorbs it, like you know. And if you're going like this, and it's like this, it's too. That's too soft, and it's actually not good for just your suspension, and it, it'll, your coilover is gonna just die. And then if it's when it's too hard, it's like doing the torque, and it's like not even hitting the ground anymore. That you're way too hard. And if you take a corner on that thing, and you hit a bump on, let's like, say, an overpass or like a turn, uh, turnabout or a roundabout for you at you uh, US. If you do a roundabout and it goes like that, and you're going like, man, I'm telling you, let's say like 130, and you hit a bump, uh, like riding on airbags, you're gonna be in the grass, like. Done, done deal so dial, dial it back is you should just go and hit like that and it's that's when it's perfect perfect and that's what you're looking for rsrs tell you guys for the price point and drivability but anyways after going from springs to coilovers i, I don't think i'd ever go back to springs you guys it's just not yeah it's day and night day and night okay so that was just a very disappointing i don't know maybe that's good it felt it felt fantastic you guys but but that just first time pull 6.9 almost seven seconds 0 60. so let's try with the launch control at 4,000 rpm and let's see how this uh how the numbers are gonna look okay let's clear this reset okay Set it and now we're gonna try it again but look at this you see how the motor mount i don't know if you guys can see it in the video but it is like just shaking but as soon as you give it a little bit of gas it see stop shaking so that just that's what the rear motor mount does just hard to uh, hard to see on video but i don't know if this one camera because it mounts it to the windshield but it's uh, like that one but once you get going you can't feel it no more okay let's try this 060 I had a GoPro on the side here but it's just dead GoPro just MIA you guys just decided to check out okay Mexicana again uh, 4000 rpm launch 060 let's see I would do a quarter mile but we don't have any quarter mile here you guys so just maybe next video okay let's try again nervous nervous 4,000 RPM, dump the clutch. At 4,000 RPM, it bogged down. When I dumped the clutch, you guys, it bogged down. And that's what you don't, you don't want that. Quarter mile. You don't want that. <laughs> Okay, let's just uh, let's pull up the numbers here. Uh, just 
pull it up. 060. Well, see, it improved, even though it bogged down. I'm pretty sure some of you guys can play. You guys are just, you know, that do drag racing and or drive even drive better than I can. We'll probably get some good numbers in here, and plus well, let's warm up the tires and everything. But 6.14. Hopefully, you guys can see that. It's shaky like crazy here. 6.14. Six point one four. Not bad, you know. Quarter mile in twenty seconds. Might have let off. Let's see if there's a graph. Let's see there. There you go. It was not bad. But okay, let's talk more about the the fearable tune. The fearable tune, ah, I don't know man, it's like Amazing like compared to the Honda Honda you guys if you're gonna get the Honda It's just basically gonna get you to the tune to your dyno tune. Just don't don't be driving on it that all day long So here's one thing about Honda. I want to tell you guys Okay, let me just shut this off Okay, so Honda I've been monitoring my uh, uh, My battery because I don't drive it all day like I don't drive it every day so I was talking to Gerald and Gerald said if for guys that drive it every day, it'll, it'll work. Like it'll be perfectly fine. But if for guys like me that you don't uh, drive your car every day and then you have your Honda Ada plugged in. So I was monitoring it on my SeaTac, the battery sense that they gave me. So I plugged it in. I, I turned it on and I took a live update on it and the state of the charge. And I noticed that it was like it dropped all the way down to like 34 at one point from from a full charge in like three or four days and i knew right away you know what it was is ever since i plugged in the that little dongle for honda Ada, i don't recommend leaving that and just unplug it well just regardless even though if it's battery or not i wouldn't leave it in there on display if somebody swipes that at a car show or just leaving your car open you, it's so easy to put in your pocket and disappear it'll disappear on you just i would leave it at home but you're kind of screwed. You can't flash any new updates or anything on your uh, on your ECU if you don't have that. And it just becomes a big, big problem because it's married to your car. Just take it off, unplug it. If your battery won't drain because I've had it plugged in before without the, the Honda Ada Dongo. The Flash Pro Mini is what they call it. No issues at all. But man, as soon as I plug that in, it drained the battery within. So I'm thinking if I left it for two weeks, It'll probably be just real flat and you're going to have a problem. The, the Fairable Tune, right now it's on sale for two, two fifty, $2.99? $2.99. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not sponsored by them or anything like that. They didn't give me no deal, but there is a, there is a deal on right now for if you want to uh, just go to their website and download it. But for the meantime, if you guys want to just stay relatively stock and looking for that extra little bit of juice, Get the Fairable Tune, you guys. So far, I've been so impressed with it. That's pretty much, I want to just give you guys a quick update. I know the parts are slowly trickling in. I just didn't want to jump in getting all the parts right away that are just whatever's available. I'm pretty particular about my builds. And you guys, uh, that's why I just slowly coming in. And is, this car, this platform is, is pretty new for this body. And I know a lot of the stuff are coming from the FK8. It's just trickling over, but they're just double checking everything. A lot of the partners I've partnered with, I'm pretty happy with. Uh, they're really particular about re releasing a product. Uh, they want to make sure everything is fine-tuned and works on the real world. Because you don't want to release a product and then just because you're first to the market. Yeah, you know what? It'll work for the meantime, but for longevity, long-term-wise. Yeah. So that's why I don't have an intake yet. We're still waiting for that to come in. Uh, we're kind of working out the details. The one that I really want to work with, they won't be releasing their intake for quite till next year. So maybe we'll have to get one in between. For my build here, the reason why I haven't really just started picking and choosing and just throwing everything in is because I really w So what I did with the GTR is I just, I went with AMS, a lot of AMS parts and this and that. And, and it's that's an American brand, nothing wrong with it. But with the Civic, uh, I wanted to go a true JDM build. I want to go for the all uh, JDM Japanese uh, parts and a true JDM um, car. And it's really, it's just because I was influenced when I went to Japan. I just fell in love with it. And 
all the stuff over there. If you go to, to Liberty Walk, and then you can see a lot of American pop culture in their builds, and it just uh, it, that combination is just killer. So while I was inspired by Japan, I wanted to do a true JDM build here, and that's why I haven't installed a lot of American parts, and unless I don't have a choice, especially like let's say the downpipe, the downpipe because in Japan they don't sell a catless downpipe. And if you want to pull the maximum power, you have to go with an American brand uh, to get a catless one. So, and they don't even produce uh, downpipes uh, for aftermarket, just for it just their emissions is just very, very strict over there. So we may see PRL, uh, even in the spoon cars, I believe it's PRL or uh, RV6. So one of those, I don't have a choice. So we're going to go with that, but some sick, exhaust coming in and you know a lot of stuff so i just want to give you guys an update on that that's why it just slowly just parts are slowly coming in and uh that's why the build's coming up really really slow so i'm at the mercy of whenever the, the parts are released but hope you guys are enjoying the vlog sorry i didn't uh release the vlog last week because this has uh, been under the weather um but uh hope you guys enjoy this one smash the subscribe button and uh, turn on the notification because next week, I'm a man of like my words. I like to like show instead of just talk. Talk is cheap. So we're going to put the car on the dyno to see this variable tune. Because they claim the numbers are, again, I'll put the link in the description below. So that I'm not talking out of my ass on this one. So they say with uh, like a PRL high, uh, high volume intake, intercooler, downpipe exhaust and 93 octane you're gonna gain or you're gonna get numbers around 386 that is impressive but i don't have any of that stock vehicle with just a very variable tune on 93 octane at uh, 362 horsepower and 371 foot pounds of torque so they say that's 50 over stock and 57 foot pounds of torque over stock well we'll see we'll see you next week so hit that subscribe button you guys and we'll put the car in the dyno for all you guys for Canada and all the United States. You probably get way better number down there. But to see if it's all in my head, like I said, or is actually legit. So we'll see you guys in the next week's vlog. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And thank you for your support, you guys. And we did make 15,000 subscribes. That is amazing. Thank you guys with all you guys' support. This is an amazing journey so far. See you guys.